What's up, everyone? It's Goose. Let's go over the Dietzel VH4, this absolutely gigantic pedal. Just look at how large this pedal is compared to the Plumes. But I think this pedal actually sounds as large as it is on the pedal board. So my setup is the same as when I had the Rev G3. And so you can watch that video over here and see what my setup is. Today, we're gonna take a look at how it is into a preamp and as a preamp as well. So the Dietzel VH4 is supposed to be based on the third channel of an actual VH4 amplifier, which I've never played before. So I'm not really here to do a comparison to like a tube amplifier as much as I'm just here to see what kind of tones this can get me. Let's start off with everything at 12 and see how it sounds. All right, so it sounds really good at 12 actually already, in my opinion. I think the best part about it is just how everything just still feels really big. And I don't know if the deep has something to do with it. So let's roll the deep back and see what it does. At 12, I think it sounds really good. Maybe roll it back slightly towards 11, and I think that's actually where I would put it. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is this presence dial. I actually think the presence dial is interesting because it acts as more of a presence cut. As I roll the pot up, you'll see what I mean. So the present style isn't doing what I thought it would do. It sounds like it's taming a bit of the high end as you go higher and adding a little bit of lower mids, I guess. I usually expect presence to affect the high end only. So at around 10 o'clock, I think, between 10 and 11, you hear the presence start to shift. And I think that's kind of where that sweet spot is, in my opinion. All right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is this master control, which is actually kind of interesting. So the master control actually adds volume until a certain point, and then it actually starts to saturate the pedal a little bit. I usually only see that in amps, so that's kind of cool. Uh, let's roll the knob and see what it does. It actually gets to about one o'clock here, and then it starts to add a little bit of low end actually to the overall saturation of the tone. Usually they're more of a clean boost kind of thing. So I think it's really cool. This pedal has plenty of gain as well. So I'm at 12 right now. I think this pedal has a lot of mids at 12. So I'm actually gonna cut that back a little bit. Uh, Trouble seems perfectly fine to me. Um, I'll probably roll that a little bit once I put the overdrive on, and then bass can stay at 12. 
I'm actually really surprised at how little I had to adjust to trouble mid and base. For me personally, most pedals, I need to do a lot to the knobs in order to get them to work the way that I want. So let's engage this overdrive. So I think it sounds really good with the overdrive on too. Currently I have this set into a power amp as a preamp. Let's switch over to this into a preamp. What's cool about this into a preamp, in my opinion, is that it doesn't seem to lose a lot of its character, but it feels like there's some kind of EQ difference between the output to guitar amp and output to power amp. This actually kind of feels like two different pedals almost. I've noticed that into a preamp, knobs aren't doing quite as much as I'd like them to do. So I just sweep through the top controls here and it feels like all the knobs get to a certain point where they pivot into more. If you turn it back, it just kind of switches into less. There's not really a consistent range between minimum and maximum with the knobs here. If we go back to the pedal as a preamp right here, even just doing the treble knob, I can already tell you it has way more range throughout the turning of the knob. As a preamp, this offers so much more um, in terms of just clarity and tweakability, actually even. I think the worst part about going into a preamp with this pedal is that this master knob no longer does that thing I mentioned earlier where it's adding saturation. Uh, this ends up just adding digital clipping into the modeler. In conclusion, I actually feel like this pedal is really good as a preamp. Um, whereas I felt like the Rev G3 sounded better going into a preamp, I think this is just better as a preamp itself. There is something weird about going into another preamp and the knobs just not doing what they're meant to do and I feel like you get full control of this pedal if you're going into it as a preamp. I think this pedal actually does really well with leads as well as rhythm. So this pedal actually just sounds immense to me. It takes boosts just extremely well too. For the actual tone, it feels really thick. It doesn't lose its clarity though, despite that thickness. And I think that low end, that Dietzel 
amps are known for, this pedal does that extremely well. The low end is just so unique to this pedal, and I think it's great. I'd actually consider using this in place of some of my patches on my GT1000. Uh, I'm probably going to do a comparison between this pedal and the Rev G3 at some point. I also have an Eris coming up soon. I might do a three-way shootout, who knows? Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Like if you like this video, subscribe if you like to, and I will see you all in the next one. Later.